Hello, welcome to the Exploratorium and also welcome to our friends on Facebook that are watching this special live show uh, from the Exploratorium. We're going to be connecting with Nautilus, which is a exploration vessel just off the coast of California. We're talking to scientists there. But first we're going to connect with the Inner Space Center and they are going to connect us to Nautilus. Kelly, are you there? Hello, Mary. Hi, Exploratorium. This is Kelly. How are you doing today? We're doing great, Kelly. Thanks. Good. I'm glad to hear it. So we're going to go live to the EV Nautilus and talk with Jan Roletto and Megan Cook, who are both on board the ship, so they can tell you what they've been doing and uh, answer any questions that you have. Hi, Jan and Megan. Can you give, give us a little update? Where are you now? What, what's going on? Exploratorium. Hi, Mary. Hi, Facebook fans. <laughs> we are currently just offshore of San Francisco, and we have, as you watch, just launched the vehicles to start the uh, dive to the Farallon Escarpment. Uh, this is an area where we're diving deeper than has been explored before, and we're really interested in seeing the coral gardens and coral habitats that are there. Jan, you want to tell us some more about that? Well, this area was just recently mapped, uh, just within the last few days, by Nautilus. Um, Several years ago, we were able to map uh, with USGS, with the help of USGS, uh, the upper reaches of Farallon Escarpment. And several years ago before that, uh, Okeanos Explorer, which is one of our NOAA ships, uh, was able to um, uh, map even deeper. So we married all of that data together and we have found a fantastic target. We call it a target. It's a really kind of a high, hard bottom relief that is probably about 1,600 meters deep. So we're going deeper than we have ever gone in the sanctuary, uh, in Greater Fairlands National Marine Sanctuary. And we're really excited. Um, many years ago, we uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, um, I've had uh, the ability to hear and read reports about some dives on, from submersibles in this area. And uh, the video footage really wasn't that great, but uh, um, we are going to have all of these fantastic lights and cameras and high definition uh, video. And we will be seeing basically for the first time, it, actually the world will have access to this information via the web via Exploratorium and Facebook. And we are hoping to see uh, what we suspect will be bamboo corals and black corals, uh, many of which can live hundreds of years old. So uh, this is really a, a look into the past. We can look at not just aging those corals themselves, but also what was the environment like that deep in the ocean um, a uh, hundred, two hundred, three hundred years ago, because corals, just like uh, trees in the forest, they grow with rings, and uh, we can, especially the bamboo corals, we can see different uh, environmental influences through those rings. So, we will be uh, working with scientists all across the country to investigate not only the identification of those corals, but also the aging of those corals and any climatology information that we can gain from them. Fantastic. So, so Jan, we are really uh, going to be fascinated to hear more about the deep sea because I think what most people know about the ocean is um, the parts of the ocean that are uh, filled with light. You know, that's where you see whales and dolphins and seals, certainly at the Farallon uh, Islands in the sanctuary, you see a lot of those. Can you tell us a, a little bit about how... Uh, the lighted part of the oceans and the deeper part of the oceans connect to each other and, and how you need to really protect both of them? Well, at Mary, as we dive a little bit deeper, we're going to start seeing what we lovingly call marine snow. And that's all of the nutrients uh, coming from the top to the bottom, but also in this area, we have strong upwelling that brings those nutrients that have settled to the bottom back up to the surface. So uh, that actually brings a lot of food and nutrition and then uh, life to the bottom. Um, uh, 
And these organisms can grow and live without the, uh, the light. So you have corals in, in the tropics that rely on photosynthetic uh, uh, algae that grows in them, and uh, so they need light. But down in these deep seas, these corals don't have those, uh, those symbiotic organisms. They, they filter feed uh, and grow from their own colonies. So, uh, Jan, you talk to us a little bit uh, about what the mission is, what you're, um, about how mapping and uh, exploring is really going to help you understand the sanctuaries better and to protect them. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works? And you mentioned, I think you mentioned you need to get baseline information, and how does that contribute to helping you protect the oceans? Well, you really protect what you don't know. And so actually on this cruise, we, uh, this research cruise, uh, we are doing a multifaceted, so mapping. Mapping is the basic information that we really need. How deep? What is the substrate like? And uh, then we can send down cameras to really explore. And so we're, we're doing both the mapping as well as the exploration. And this will help us later on in a, in a few years to really then characterize. And through that characterization, we have baseline. And so that is our starting point. And after baseline would then come monitoring what happens uh, over time. And that's what monitoring is all about. So we're kind of taking it step by step. You can't do everything at once. Uh, and you certainly can't uh, do long-term monitoring in a very short amount of time because that's just not going to happen. Uh, so you really have to map, characterize, uh, but before you characterize, you really need to explore. And that's really what we're doing right now is we're looking, we're just taking a peek at certain areas of the sanctuary and where do we want to concentrate our characterization efforts. And then after we characterize, we get our species inventory, we get our depths, we, we know where our hard bottom substrates are, we know where uh, some of our sen more sensitive resources are, and then we can build uh, a monitoring plan. Um, and that first series of monitoring is that's what we species inventory inside the sanctuary. Just with a few dives and a few looks down into the deep sea, we found things that we knew lived in other deep sea habitats, other neighborhoods, but hadn't seen yet in the sanctuary. Right. So we're making great progress. Yes, and through our partners, we, um, so I think we're up to about 11 new species for the sanctuary species inventory. And um, we actually uh, may have gotten some new species. Uh, it's it's uh, a little hard for the taxonomist to identify sponges and corals just by looking at them. They have to look at their DNA, and they have to look at their uh, skeletal structure and their morphology. And so there's uh, quite a few more months, if not years, in really determining do we have similar species or do we have a new species? And it always amazes me when we do these uh, ROV surveys and uh, characterization efforts that uh, we have been able to find a new species that is not known to uh, humankind. So we, we will see, but uh, we collected many, many samples uh, that will be going to Harvard and California Academy of Sciences, and those coral and sponge uh, experts, those curators, will also work with other colleagues throughout the nation in order to really identify many of these species. I think we're, we're almost uh, out of preservative, so we're, we're we're holding on to just a, a few more uh, uh, vials so that we can uh, preserve uh, what we get on this particular dive. Uh, so Jan, you mentioned earlier, um, and you actually gave us uh, some footage of dives that were made, I think on a vehicle called Sea Cliff. Um, and the dives, could you describe a little, we're gonna roll that footage from that expedition. Can you describe a little how that was done back then, and then compare a little bit for us 
the advancement that you're able to make now with the Nautilus, with its ROVs and telepresence and scientists on shore, just how much more that gives you now in order to do your exploration than you had back in the 1990s with Sea Cliff. Okay, so I can't see the video that you're showing, but um, I've looked at many, many hours of old VHS tapes collected from the Sea Cliff. The Sea Cliff uh, is a submersible. It's actually in dry dock now at Woods Hole Institute, but the Sea Cliff, when it was out here, uh, the Navy was operating it, the EPA was operating it, along with the sanctuaries, and uh, they were diving in, a, in uh, the deeper portions of what was known at the time, Gulf of the Farallons National Marine Sanctuary, before we expanded and changed our name, and also what was then the, the area of uh, Monterey Sanctuary before it was even designated. So this was in the early uh, 90s, late 80s. And if you take a toilet paper roll tube and you look through it, that's the view that you would get from the submersible uh, the lights would shine out just from the submersible. Uh, it would have a uh, pilot and a navigator, and then they would wedge in a biologist kind of underneath the console, and there was a porthole down there, and the biologist would kind of like lean to its side and look through the porthole, and if uh, they saw something interesting, the pilot or the navigator, whoever was holding the VHS camera in the front porthole where there was lights, they would give it to the biologist here. There you go. And so if you're seeing dark, that's the biologist looking at something that's really cool, uh, but you can't see anything because the lights are going just in the front of the submersible, and it's just VHS tape, and there's just not a lot enough ambient light to get anything on the videotape. And then the, the biologist would hand the camera back to the navigator, and they put it up to the porthole to the front of the submersible. <laughs> so... I mean, it, you can see that even just descending in the water column uh, right now, just it's like sitting out on your front porch at home because you have Hercules with all of this beautiful camera, all of these great lights, cameras all around that, that are smaller cameras, and then you have Argus, and you have Argus, the eye in the sky, looking down at Hercules. So you can tell what all around Hercules. You get that 360 degree view of Hercules. So you can see both what's around and out of view of Hercules, as well as that high definition video uh, from Hercules. Um, the other day when we were diving in um, Pioneer Canyon, uh, we wanted, uh, so we didn't want to collect so many samples. I think our trays were doing was we were putting the, the camera lasers 10 centimeters apart on particular specimens and then zooming in and we could see these polyps and the little tentacles of the polyps on these corals that are maybe a centimeter tall and that's the resolution that you get from this technology. It's worlds apart. Ever since I've, I've uh, read those reports and uh, heard about these VHS videotapes, that was probably 20 years ago. I've been waiting for this day. This is, this is my day. And now we have you spoiled with all of yes. our high resolution video. <laughs> Never back to the VHS again. Oh and no. <laughs> the great advantage of also this telepresence system is that we've been able to include so many other scientists and experts. So when we say, uh, if we don't have our particular sponge morphologist sitting in the van because we forgot to invite that person on the ship or there just weren't enough births for them, yeah. we only get a few generalist scientists, but we can get on the phone, we can say, hey, come take a look at this take a look at what we just found, mm -hmm. and immediately consult the experts of the world, which has been really powerful and really helpful when right. we're going to places you've never right. seen before. Yeah, we have about 30 scientists ashore uh, really pinging in and out. Uh, we have marine archaeologists, historians, uh, people from USGS, geologists, uh, habitat characterization specialists from USGS, uh, working side by side, virtually side by side with uh, the, the 
techs here on, on board the, the Nautilus, picking out dive targets, uh, as well as biologists uh, so, and, and educators. So we have a, a nice wide variety, a nice array of people. So uh, when we don't know a particular fish, uh, they chime in and tell us what fish it is. And uh, it's, it, the, this telepresence is just amazing. It's phenomenal. So Jan, you, uh, uh, you mentioned, and we can see that the uh, ROV is diving now. Is, as a biologist, what are you looking at when you, when you see it uh, descending? What, can you describe a little bit about, uh, about some of the things that you might see and how important the water column is, not just the surface and the bottom, but the water column? So the um, actually uh, a lot of life lives in the water column, and uh, we actually are passing by it pretty quickly in order to uh, um, reach the bottom and spend as much time because that is our particular goal for this dive. If we were to uh, be investigating the midwater water column, uh, we would be using probably different equipment, uh, different types of acoustics sampling as well as net sampling, and really bringing all of that back up to the surface to look at all of that zooplankton, sometimes phytoplankton. Um, we might look for uh, types of phytoplankton that are home for create harmful algal blooms, but uh, phytoplankton as well as zooplankton that feed uh, the the seabirds that eat plankton, the blue whales that eat plankton, or the fish that then feed the whales and the salmon and uh, uh, the pinnipeds, the seals and sea lions, uh, and the, the other ways uh, of, of uh, seabirds and shorebirds too. So uh, this water column is very, very important. Um, so when we're diving, we're, we're, we're just going ooh and ah. Sometimes a, a, a fur seal will swim by and sometimes uh, we'll be looking at a, a salp chain or um, tiny little copepods or tinafores that are that in, in the light, they, they have like almost like flashing little rainbow effect to them. So it's, it's really filled with uh, quite a bit of life. Uh, when we are diving, we are also data logging. So right now, uh, our data logger is typing in anything that is uh, identifiable as we descend in the water column. I'm seeing um, some of the feed that's coming in from, the, uh, from Hercules right now, and it's looking pretty clear. So uh, we've had some calm weather over the last several days. Uh, so in our area, we get a little bit of wind, uh, we get calm, and so we're kind of, whoop, it's always the, the noises that come out of me when I'm looking at these things kind of darting across the screen. But uh, usually a lot of squid in the, in the water column. It, at least that's what we're seeing. We've got time for about one more question, if you have one. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, we have a question from the audience. Okay. So how do you... Um, I don't quite understand where you are. I saw you on Osnilus. They mentioned that they saw the Nautilus here at the Exploratorium and want to know exactly where are you right now? So we are about, um, let's see, about five miles west of the Farallon Islands. So you can, on a clear day, I don't think you can see us today, uh, the Farallon Islands, but uh, we are just on the other side of the Farallon Islands today. And we will return back into San Francisco at the end of this expedition and continue exploring, uh, doing some more seafloor mapping yes. for the rest of our expedition season and then be back live. We explore all around the world and you can join our scientists here just like this uh, 24 hours a day and watch everything that we're about to discover when we get here to the seafloor yes. on the Farallon Escarpment. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking, uh, taking some time uh, to... Talk with us today at the Explore Tournament on Facebook and wish you good luck with this dive.
Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Mary, and thank you Exploratorium. And uh, all of your great questions. Please follow along for the rest of the season and send in more of your questions to our website, nautiluslive.org. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mary, back to you. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Thank everybody here for joining us at the Exploratorium and on the web and on Facebook Live. Signing out from the Exploratorium, I want to thank the McBean Family Foundation, the Oak Meadow Foundation, Ocean Exploration Trust, and NOAA for assisting us in this broadcast today. Thank you. Thank you.